You've probably heard of the term FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. It's a big motivating force in the world. But have you met the arch nemesis of FOMO, JOMO? That's right. We're not talking about Michael Jackson's noise, JOMO, but it's the acronym, JOMO, Joy of Missing Out. I met this phrase over the weekend, and the more I reflect on it, the more I realize how vastly and deeply important this really is. Think of all the time you spend on these things. Think how often you stare at it, react to it, touch it, flip it open, look forward to it. On average, we check our phones 47 times a day. We spend on average four hours a day on these things, which equates to 56 days a year on our phones. Ask yourself this, have you ever thought about turning it off for a little while? And if you haven't, why not? I haven't really thought about it until I was forced to. Just got back from a wedding in Montana. Shout out to Em and Ryan, one of the best. Anyway, while there, in remote Montana, I experienced an unusual phenomenon. I had no cell service for four days. You laugh, but there was legit withdrawal for at least a day. No emails, no internet, no weather updates, no tweets, no YouTube, no Fortnite, no good social media, no bad social media, no media. But then the symptoms subsided. Soon I was looking up at this and down at this. There were people, like awesome people I got to know, like Bill and Chris, who I got to know because we were all present and not distracted. This, as I look back, was pure, unfettered JOMO. JOMO is FOMO's underappreciated doppelganger. I just to say it's the joy of missing out instead of the fear of missing out. Catherine Price is a New York Times contributor, a science journalist, and author of five books, including her latest, How to Break Up With Your Phone. When you spend all your time constantly refreshing and checking, you're teaching your brain to release constant spritzes of dopamine, which is a brain chemical that tells us when something's worth doing again. So checking your phone is very self-reinforcing. And then the flip side is that once you activate the cycle, which by the way is the same system that's activated in addictions to drugs and alcohol and things like gambling, uh, then you actually begin to release stress hormones when you can't fulfill that craving, when you can't check. There are actually many similarities between slot machines and our phones. For example, the bright colors, the noises, the sense of anticipation, the unpredictability, which our brains find absolutely irresistible. And the important thing there is to recognize that slot machines are widely considered to be one of the most addictive machines ever invented. And everything in the slot machine is designed to get you to keep playing that slot machine. Price is not saying throw your $500 iPhone in the river. She's saying it's time more folks reassess their relationship with their phones and realize why they feel certain ways about it. Listen, I really appreciate the conversation because I'm actually, through you, I'm actually thinking more about what happened this weekend and putting it into focus and more explanation as to, no, it was real and it was more real than you think. It's not something to write off. That's exactly right. Yeah. It is real and it's more important than you think. And I think that more of us should go to on vacation in situations where there legitimately is no cell service and see what it does to us. It was a mental cleanse that I didn't expect and I really can appreciate. And I've never thought about it, but when you refresh your Twitter or you hear the beep, the ringing beep from a text or a fresh email or a tweet or whatever, it does the same type of thing as a slot machine. You don't have money on the line, but you have maybe a compliment on the line or some negative feedback or just a conversation. Attention is on the line. Yeah, a like. A like, a whatever. Think about it. And you, yeah. That's the sounds and the looks. Anyway. Uh, she challenges people to do this thing called the 30-day challenge. It's a phone breakup, right? It's not putting your phone down. It's just changing your habits. You can go to phonebreakup.com, and she has resources for you on how to do this gently, which we kind of joke about, but think about it. It's kind of serious. Yeah, she's encouraged me to buy an alarm clock. That's the only excuse I have left for why it's around me all the time. The, the, the phone? Yeah. Yeah, good deal. All right.